Hi Ian. Hello. Um, what's all this about then? Well we have standing here in Whitsmore for the Trade Union Socialist Coalition. We're going to stand in the council elections to oppose the cuts uh, that will come from the government, whether it's Tory Labour or Lib Dem. So we want to get councillors elected who will oppose those cuts <laughs> and work with the local community to defend their local services. Yeah. And. Uh, do you have a previous experience of this? Yeah, I was a Socialist Party Council in Lewisham for 15 years, where we stood uh, on a policy of defending local services. We were successful in stopping closures of local community centres, sell off for council housing while working with the community. Uh, once we got elected, there was two councillors and we stood up and we fought against those cuts. Uh -huh. We're now standing for the Trade Union Socialist Coalition, which uh, is a coalition which the Socialist parties uh, also involved in and uh, we want to build across the country an anti-austerity party that will stand up for public services rather than privatisation and profit. And uh, how's it going so far? Well we've just started up our campaign in the area, we've done a couple of stalls, we've had a fairly good response because what we find is a lot of people are really fed up with, uh, with our with the main parties, so that's why we want to build an alternative that will give them something uh, to believe in, in, in the basis that we're for public services, uh, we're not, we don't believe that the bankers and big business should be bailed out and that we should pay for prices that we didn't, that we didn't cause. Well, um, what's the difference between uh, you and the, the Labour candidates? Well, the Labour candidates are whether they're good or bad Labour, individual Labour candidates, they're part of the Labour Party, which is an austerity party. So if, for instance, there was a Labour government, no matter how well-intentioned uh, Labour councillors are, they will be forced to carry out and, and, and stay in line with uh, their main party policy, which is to implement cuts in public services. There's been several Labour councillors that have left the Labour Party because they are fed up with cutting public services and privatising services and have joined Tusk. And so we say the difference between us is that we're a party that's put forward policies of public services. We believe in socialist policies that make sure there's enough for everybody and that there's jobs for everybody, whereas the Labour Party are just, uh, just much the same as the Conservatives. They want to implement uh, big business cuts and privatisation. Okay. Could you tell me, what's the difference between, um, for young people, say, who are not aware of um, socialism's past, what's the difference between socialism and the, uh, conservatism, say? Well, on, on, on the bigger scale, we believe in democratically planned uh, services in which everyone has a saying which they run. Like, for instance, the big industries. We've seen on the telly lately, they're talking about the energy industries and how uh, they're not cutting costs and uh, there should be more competition, which is Labour's position. We say nationalise the energy services, you have the economy of scale uh, to ensure that you make savings and, and provide an efficient service, and you have the democracy that that can be overlooked by elected representatives, by trade unions, by people in, in the community to ensure that you get a fair service. And we, that one example we could use a, a, across the board, both in local services and other national services like the railways, for instance. Uh, I hear that uh, Kent County Council are going to implement massive cuts. What's, what's your view on that and how are you going to uh, rally against it? Well, we will obviously support uh, the trade unions and the communities that oppose those cuts because we can completely condemn those cuts in much the way that uh, I've explained why we want public services. Uh, I mean this isn't an election for Kent County Council, it's an election for Canterbury City Council and likewise they're making cuts. If we're elected we will use that position to open up the town hall, uh, the council chamber for local people who want to be heard and to give them an opportunity to put real pressure and hold those councillors to account. They've had a cosy life in that town hall where they just get away with things. Mm. We will use our positions to open up the town hall, much in the way that I did in Lewisham, and put them under real pressure. I mean, if Tusk had uh, a majority on the council, we would stand up and we would oppose the government on the cuts. We would put forward a needs-based budget, 
and on the basis that we were elected and had support of the community, we would, we would demand that the government give us the money to fund our services and call on the community to support that, call on the trade unions to support that. And obviously that's something we would like to see spread across the country. It's early days at the moment, we're just starting to stand in the councils, but in the future that will be how we would put forward uh, our policies in order to support, uh, well, to support the community. So you've got a pretty poor view of the, um, how the Lib Dems have uh, stood up to uh, Councillor, Councillor Gilby of the Tory party. Uh, sorry, the Conservative Party then, have you? Well, I mean, the Lib Dems, uh, as they proved when they went into coalition, like Labour, are just, the big three are just parties of austerity, parties that will look after this big business, but won't look after our local services, won't look after our hospitals, our local community centres, won't look after our libraries, uh, and will we'll pass them over, either cut them or privatise them. Uh, so, you wouldn't expect the Lib Dems or any of the other main parties to do much else at the council as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I, hear, I hear that they're, they're going to put the library, thinking of putting the libraries into a charitable trust or something. Yeah. Uh. Well, I mean, that's, from the first instance, uh, the quality of service, the paying condition of workers will suffer. There's no guarantee that the libraries will continue. There's no guarantee that uh, they, will, they will keep decent opening hours. There's no guarantee whatsoever what will happen with those libraries. Uh, the professionalism of the staff will be lost and that is something that will affect all, all the service users, if you want to call people who use libraries under that terminology. Uh, once again, it's something that is uh, Kent County Council is putting forward. But if we were elected as local representatives, we would use our position to help give voice, because people are brilliant at campaigning to defend their services. But we would use our positions to help give voice to their campaigns and to force the issue uh, and to make a stand to try and defend those services. Okay, Ian. Um, do you have anything else more to say about your campaign? Well, we're going to uh, try and get our message across to as many people as possible. As I say, Tusk will be standing in more and more elections. And we also understand that you need councillors that will do the bread and butter stuff. I've sort of talked about what we stood for. But if we were elected as well, you know, we would be running surges on a regular basis. We would be finding out from people who know more about local services around the cut than perhaps uh, we do as individuals if it's not something that we use every day. And we will be giving them a voice and also a represent on all the issues where, you know, people having problems with housing benefit, all those type of issues that come up on a day-to-day -day basis. They will get councillors that will, one, fight the cuts that are affecting their lives, but two, take up the everyday issues that are really important for them. All right. Okay, thank you, Ian. My pleasure, thank you. Uh, this is Delia Hezrati. 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 Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, you're standing for Gora Award as well, uh, along with Ian. Um, That's what I'm. I'm standing with Ian and, and Mary uh, for the Trade Union Socialist Coalition, and we, you know, obviously we want to defend local services and uh, you know fight the cuts that which are trying to be brought through by at the moment this Tory government, and it could be. You know, either Labour minority or just knows um, after after May. But uh, I think another one of the points that we, we want to make is we want to save things like the Shore Start Centres. And I was uh, part of that campaign and the marching and um, leafleting of Shore Start Centres. Uh, there was uh, I think 27 down earmark closure, and we managed to save 13 with a really big campaign going to Maidstone and marching with mothers and pushchairs, etc. But as well as councillors, we would uh, make sure the Canterbury Council pays their staff at least um, a living wage and also fight for them to um, put that up to a £10 an hour minimum wage. And I helped sort of launch the campaign in Kent for £10 an hour minimum wage. Especially, um, you know, people in my family, they're on zero hour contracts, minimum wage, they never know what, what they're going to be working at next. Uh, the worst case scenario, my daughter took her nearly an hour to get ready for work with the makeup, etc. She came home after three quarters of an hour expecting to do a six hour shift. They didn't need her at Domino's. 
Um, they sent her home and she was really upset. She, you know, she wanted the money and uh, she spent all day waiting to go to work. So it's, it's not flexibility for, the, for, for those workers, it's flexibility for the people and the bosses and not for the young people who have to uh, go to work in these situations. Oft, often in really quite bad situations, not very good breaks, you know, n not very nice uh, sort of um, working conditions to have and it's just not really offering our young people much of a future. Mm. So you're standing up for young people. Um, do you have any positions on um, pensioners or anything? Well, the pensioners have seen uh, a cut in their living standards. Um, I, I live, live with my mother, um, so I can look after her. And she was receiving the uh, win winter heating allowance, and, that, and that's been reduced. Um, you know, which makes her sort of worried if she's got the heating on, uh, because without it, she does actually get hypothermia. So we've sort of, sort of biting the bullet and we've, we've got the heating on, but it's, it's not very nice for her to have to worry. And it, it seems scandalous when she's paid into the system all her life that she's now taxed as well. So pensioners keep on paying. Yeah, they pay when they work yeah. and they pay when they're pensioners as well. And they've, they've seen the brunt of quite a lot of the cuts. And this has been this ridiculous picture painted of pensioners sort of being kind of rich and stuff now. But for, for a lot of pensioners, it's still this question of heat or eat. And, um, you know, their living standards have gone down and they've taken away also a lot of free travel from um, pensioners. They used to be able to get on National Express buses and stuff like that. And this government's even been thinking about things like means testing bus passes, which of course would be absolutely against cutting of um, people, you know, old people or people on disability living allowance, having any of those things cut away from them because it uh, just reduces their freedoms and their ability to lead independent lives. Yeah, I, I hear that uh, the present austerity government is uh, taking away community care, um, saying it's too costly. I mean, there's been um, it's, it's been reported quite a lot in the press that the percentage of community care has gone right down. Um, I work, I you know, I'm a radiographer, and working in hospitals, you can see that there's more people um, backing up in the hospitals. The main, the main reason why people are hanging around in the hospital is they haven't got anywhere to go. It's not that the A&E department is inefficient, it's just, it's just that there isn't anywhere to go because the beds are being blocked, because people are not able to go out into their community. They're having to stay in hospital longer because there is not the services that there used to be. Home help has gone right down, Meals on Wheels has been slashed. Uh, which is, a, you know, this was a real life life for people yeah. and uh, people have been reduced to having 15 minutes of care a day which is a scandal. It's also a scandal for those people who are having to rush around from patient to patient, quite stressful and really by the time they've actually get, because they're not paid in between driving to one client to the other, that means they're actually on less than the minimum wage. So we would um, want to stand up for people who are working in the care industry um, my own son was a care worker and uh, you know it wasn't really very nice conditions it, a lot of them were on, again zero hours minimum wage a lot of the workers weren't told about things like holiday pay etc really quite exploiting a lot of young people to go into that with some kind of care and so that's something that we are continue to fight for Tony Cameron's got this idea of um, uh, making young people between the ages of 18 and 25 uh, working or volunteer, well not volunteer, working for their benefit. What, what's your idea of, on that? Well it sounds like slave labour to me, that making making people work for nothing, um, just as in, I like we have internments as well, is, um, is, is, is a disgrace, so it's very windy. <laughs> Um, it, it's, it's, there should be proper jobs, proper apprenticeships, they're cutting jobs, you know, they, they try to make out that, uh, that the, the jobless figure's gone down, but just reading in the local uh, Whitstable Times this week, they, all the figures are saying that unemployment has gone up, so I'm not sure which figure the governments are using. I, I haven't seen an improvement in job opportunities for young people. They need to be offering people a proper, young people a proper future. That people have gone to university and spent, uh, their parents often spent all that money. There should be something when they come out and, and not just say to them that you now have to work 
in a, in a store for no, for no money whatsoever. It's an absolute disgrace and that's not offering anybody anything. When they've done their six weeks or whatever of working for nothing, they'll just get rid of them and get another load of young people to work for nothing. And that's not what we should be doing. And uh, we, we stand up to the government if they try to, like Ian said, um, stand up to the government against the cuts. Absolutely. I mean, we're here to be elected as councillors and when we go into the council chamber, we'll be putting forward that there should be like a deficit budget, that we should oppose all the cuts, that we're not here. We're elected by the people of Whitstable who have a very proud history actually of fighting against all sorts of cuts in their town. You know, good, a real good sort of history of fighting against closures, of post office, etc., of job centres. And we want to continue that. And, and try and force the council not to start cutting things that essential services like Shore Start centres, libraries, possibly uh, you know, going out to some kind of uh, trust, which we, we totally disagree with as well. OK, Delia. Do you have anything else to say about your campaign? Um, just, it, it's a, you know, an exciting campaign. We've had um, a few uh, people who were Labour councillors coming over and deciding they want to stand for task. People are sort of talking to us all the time and seem really quite enthused in this town um, when, you, when realising that we are, we are something different, we're not the same old stuff. Um, and uh, it seems to be quite exciting times. Right, oh, thank you very much, okay. Delia. All right, thanks. Much appreciate <laughs> Oh, too. Would you like to leave? Yeah, I'm going to get some cats.